Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Ha! Ah, delightful. Today is Monday, September 25th, last week of September. Sorry to uh, alarm those of you who hadn't realized. I have realized because I got shit for word count last week as reported on Friday. <laughs> um, I got something like 4,000 words for the week, which I know is for some people great. Yeah. 42, 15. Um, so, you know, at least I made progress. Give myself some credit for that. Uh, Killian's dragging stuff around. He's on here out here on his leash. I'll have to go rescue him. All right, so, hmm, I'm not seeing, oh, I am seeing the game. This time, very interestingly, when I went to adjust the sound beforehand, it had stayed where I put it last time. Like, why did it stay this time when it never did before? I don't get it, but I was glad that it stayed. So, um... So yeah, I didn't get 15,000 words last week. I didn't even get 10,000 words or 5,000 words, but I got some words and we have a new dog. <laughs> uh, reference Friday's podcast where I told you everything. So Mary Robinette is flying home this morning and we are, we are settling into a semblance of routine again. Uh, which will be quickly shattered because we have a friend coming to visit tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, this is where I do a little bit of my marital bitching because this friend is, we haven't seen this friend in 15, 16 years from back when we lived in Wyoming and he's coming tomorrow and he's staying with us for a week, for a freaking week. And I've always had this rule that four nights, four nights for me to stay with someone else, four nights for someone to stay with me. Um, but this has gotten thrown out lately, uh, with David's brother or other family coming to visit, um, which actually is fine. David wants a longer visit. That's fine. But, um, yeah, it's just like going to disrupt my week, but hopefully, He's really coming to see David. So hopefully they can go, they're going to go fishing every day and all of that. I was seriously considering, um, staying, going away this coming weekend and staying at like an inn somewhere, uh, just to get my head back in this book and to give myself <laughs> a little bit of alone time. But the place I wanted to stay is no longer available. It was also expensive. And I think maybe I'll just hang out at home. It's so beautiful here. You know, it's like my garden, my home is as beautiful as any in. Um, yeah, maybe I'll go to a pool somewhere. But I also, one thing that I got done on Saturday that I was happy to get done is my uh, twice yearly turning over of clothing. So I put all of my summer things away and got out all of the fall and winter things and am reminded, I think I may have said this last year, am reminded at how lean my winter wardrobe is now. Uh, I think there's a few reasons for this. One of them is as a result of pandemic. Uh, there has not been, and, and I'm sorry, if you are here for insights on industry and publishing. I will get to it, uh, and writing, uh, but for now it's, it's girly fashion. Um, <laughs> uh, fashion is still weird ever since pandemic. It's like everything got behind, everything's been sitting on con container ships. It's, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's better this fall, but it occurred to me that instead of spending the money on going to an inn that I might go 
see if I can do some clothes shopping. Um, see if, if the selection is better. Uh, one thing that's been the case for a while is that I do most of my shopping with my mom when I visit her in Tucson. And, <laughs> and so it's all warm weather clothes. So the winter wardrobe has really suffered. So we shall see. I, I might go just do solo shopping. Um, yeah. Yeah. Funny thing. Somebody even said that they were going to put that in their script was a woman because <laughs> I was complaining about that. A woman complaining that everything in this store smelled like it had been on a container ship for two years, which is true. It was interesting because that same person had, uh, it was a guy and he had said that, uh, clothing is just a necessity and that it's no more important than, you know, like, I can't remember, you know, like food and shelter and clothing and that nobody really cares about it. And I said, well, that's stupid. Clothing is art. <laughs> of course, food and shelter can also be art. It's all what we decide to make of our basic needs, right? I've always thought that was something about hedonism is just the savoring of daily life, savoring of, you know, yes, you need to eat, but can food be fabulous? I thought it was interesting uh, having Mary Robinette here for a week and taking her to different places where I like to go. And uh, yesterday morning we went to Cafecito here in Santa Fe, which is one of my favorites. And I was just telling her that the good things to have are, well, my fa one of my favorite things to order there is the Dolce de Leche Latte. And and I told her about that and I told her about the hot chocolate, which is an amazing experience because they bring it to you with steamed milk and a chunk of chocolate and you melt the chocolate in there. So, but she opted for the Dolce de Leche Latte. And so when it came and they bring it to you with a little spoon, a little demi tasse spoon. And I said, so what you do is there's the Dolce de Leche is on the bottom. I said, so you can savor it for a sweet hit at the end, or you use the spoon and stir it up in there to, you know, blend in as much of the sweet as you want. And she said, I like going places with you. <laughs> and I realized that like the whole week I'd been advising her on like the cool thing to order from the menu. And I'm like, oh, and they'll let you do this and this. And to me, that's the same thing. It's like, yeah, you have to put clothing on your body. Um, but why not have it be something that makes you feel good and arty, uh, excited about life? Uh, things that have been on container ships. I mean, it was really a weird thing because, you know, fashion plans ahead several years, just like publishing industry. You know, they've got their projections out a couple of years and, you know, so that they can get everything manufactured. So, you know, like the, clothes for next fall. I don't know. They might be already made, you know, or they're making in China and then they'll put it on the container ship and ship it over. And so when we had the worldwide lockdown, all of these clothes sat in the container ships and didn't get sent. And then when they finally got sit, sent, the stores were glutted and they were glutted with things that we no longer felt like wearing. I think they could not get rid of these clothes because, and I don't know if you all remember this, but you know, when we could finally shop again, <laughs> right. You know, a uh, pretty woman. I remember that summer of 2020, uh, when we could, you know, we still had to mask up, but we could go into the stores again. Uh, and they had come out, especially that fall with all of those like ruffly peasant blouses and things. And it was like, no, we had had enough of homesteading. <laughs> we had had enough of baking our own bread and, 
it was just like the wrong thing but they couldn't possibly have predicted that right this is like comes back to the idea of the black swan event which is from finance but i love it it's the disruptive event that people cannot predict right they don't know um it, it it's it's unpredictable <laughs> I, I was trying to think of a stronger word for it than that, but um, that's what happens with some of these words. We overuse them, right? But for something to be completely unpredictable, right? For the arise of a novel virus um, and that there's going to be a worldwide lockdown because of it, completely unpredictable. And you don't know how people are going to feel coming out of that. But I could tell you what I and every other I, I, I hesitate to call myself a fashionista, but everyone else I know interested in fashion, we all took one look at those roughly peasant blouses and long skirts and we were like, no, F no. So anyway, that's a lot of talk for clothes on an ostensibly writing podcast. One of the other things I got done this weekend is I uh, finished I caught up on my royalty crunching. I try to do it as it comes in because different platforms pay at different times of the month. The first one is Google. Google Play comes in usually around the 15th of the month. Uh, next to come in is Kobo. Next to come in is generally Smashwords. Find Away Voices for my audiobooks comes in uh, right around then. And I think that's all of the ones. And Ideally, the one that takes longest to do is Amazon, and that's at the very, very end of the month. The Amazon reports are ready usually on the last working day of the month. Uh, but ideally, if I can do these as they come in, and what I do is they have the royalty spreadsheet for that payment, and I go through and I sort by title. And then I do a summary of number sold for that title and amount sold for that title. Now, some of them allow you to do this um, like report by report, but when you have like me, 64 published titles, I'm not going to go through freaking report by report. So what I do is I do a spreadsheet, um, just export to Excel, and then I can do my data sort. I do my filtering. And I get these numbers for each book. And then I record those in my big Excel workbook, which I've been keeping from the beginning of, of my sales. And, and then I end up doing that for each platform. So this weekend I got it done for Google play, which is usually the smallest Kobo is um, right up there. And Kobo has two different spreadsheets, uh, one for their Kobo reads program and one for their sales. Smashwords is just one spreadsheet. Um, find away voices. I ended up not doing because even though they paid me their royalty report for that month was not yet ready. So I had to make a note to come back to it. Seeing what the kitten is doing. He's thinking about wall, even though he's on leash. So because I am going through these reports for each book and I have a separate spreadsheet for each book and on there, I do track, um, sales over time. And I also track sales by platform. So, the only one I don't really know in detail is Apple versus Scribd because the Smashwords one is what I used to distribute to those. So I could break those out because Smashwords does give me that data. I just never have. Maybe I should. I've thought about it. Um, some authors have told me that they, oh, hang on. He was stuck. No, he is free. So, um, yeah, so some, oh, some other author friends tell me that like Apple is their second biggest one. Uh, I know that it's not because Apple is a subset 
not for me because Apple is a subset of Smashwords. And my second biggest is Kobo, easily Kobo, um, which is funny because somebody had told me, I think it was a Barnes and Noble person told me that, uh, oh no, it was a Smashwords person told me that Kobo was really going downhill and sales were dropping. I was like, um, not for me, not for me. So because I have this spreadsheet set up for each book, I am able to. So because I have a spreadsheet for each different book and because I do this retailer by retailer, I can really see certain trends that I have not yet data analyzed. And I'm wondering if anyone else has looked at this. Um, and thinking I'm going to have to do it myself, but I can, there are some books that like sell on Google play fairly well that barely sell on any other platform. Um, like, like don't sell it all on Kobo and vice versa. I mean, it is weird. It's like Google play only, only certain books sell on there. Uh, and other ones, not at all, but those ones that do sell actually sell kind of nicely. Uh, Google play, I think I already said is, is my lowest of all the platforms, but I would totally stay on there because there are some books that sell on Google play that sell nowhere else. And it's the same with Kobo and often it's entire series. And so I'm, I'm wondering if it's like how I have my metadata set up on those platforms that they would sell better if I uh, tweaked that metadata. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a funny thing. And some of them are like obscure books, obscure enough, you know, like older, shorter, um, like we could talk about bird woman. Uh, it's a good time of year to talk about bird woman because bird woman is technically it's an essay, uh, because it's a true story. It's something that everything in that is absolutely swear to the stars above true. And it's, it's a freaky story. Uh, it's about a kind of paranormal ish encounter that we had in the Pacific Northwest. And I will link to it. Bird woman is available for like 99 cents because it's short. Um, I originally had it published in a, um, literary magazine and then republished it later. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just a short. And so I don't charge a lot for it, but it like, I sell like maybe a couple of copies a month and but only on certain retailers and the other ones never, not a one. And I can see it, you know, like my column for that retailer, it's like, no, nope, never. So I'm very curious to know what that is. Um, you know, it seems like a lot of the data analysis happens on Kindle unlimited The you know, like the people who are really doing that kind of thing. I'm not sure if the wide people spend much time on that sort of analysis, but um, I'm really interested to know. So I don't know, maybe as I get caught up on things, I might spend a little time doing that. Um, the other thing I worked on this weekend was doing my author info sheet for my new publisher. Uh, I think we might have the official announcement coming out, like maybe next week, my editors out through the 28th. So, but maybe next week, that would be nice. I saw one of my writer friends with my same agency just announced her book deal. Um, that I knew about back in April cause she had told me about it then. And when she announced it, I was like, wow, that took a long time to announce And She's like, I know it's been driving me crazy. So I don't know what happened there. Hopefully mine won't take that long. So anyway, this author info sheet is five pages long before I started answering, before I started putting stuff in. So hopefully they will use that information. I always think I'm forgetting stuff, right? You know, cause they ask things like, 
you know, are there fan sites of your books and, and what all. So um, I'm going to go get to work. I uh, hope that you all have a wonderful week, that you are equal to the challenges that the week is bringing. And I will talk to you all on Friday. You all take care. Bye-bye.